What's going on? It's Marcel Charlene Smith and Pippa Monique. Two very excited Arsenal fans as we saw them beat Norwich 4-0 in yesterday's game, which now puts them seventh in the table. And I was part of the action live with BT Sports as a virtual fan. Pips, how proud are you as an Arsenal fan right now? Yeah, proud is an overstatement. I'm just very gassed because I'm not going to lie, I walked into that game Expect no, I wasn't expecting an L, but I wasn't expecting to see the performance that we saw. It was a very, very good performance, especially in the first 45 minutes. Danny Ceballos looked like a whole new man, a whole new player. And I'm guessing the goal he got in the last game, I'm sure it's given him mad confidence to um because that performance in the first 45 was so impressive. He was pulling all the strings in the midfield and it was just a joy to watch. He got brought down a couple of times by some Norwich players. You could tell they were taking it in turns to foul him so they couldn't so they wouldn't get sent off. But he was the player to watch in the first 45, and I'm sure he got on every Norwich man's nerves. Speaking of the midfield as well, we also saw a goal from Shaka. How important would you say he is to Arsenal? He's so important. And I think we're finally starting to realise that as fans, because when he first joined, of course, we were really excited because he was scoring them 25-yard screamers and stuff. And then he kind of just went downhill, um, and then the whole frustration happened under Emery and stuff. But under Arteta, he even looks like a new player. Um, and I don't think people realise how fundamental he is in that midfield and how he holds it all together. When you pay attention to his gameplay, he's so critical to that team because the games that he's not involved in, you see things start to fall apart in the midfield. And I'm so happy that he got the goal as well. You could tell on his face that he was super excited. He told that at Bam Yang and that assist as well. It was a beautiful goal. And also his first goal this season as well. Had a very, it's a good one to start off with. You never know, he might get some more now. <laughs> We also saw a debut from Cedric Suarez. I mean, a banging goal, literally yeah. five minutes after being subbed on. I four. mean, what? Four minutes. Was it four minutes? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I mean, how would you describe him as a player also? It's hard to say, but obviously, if we're going to judge that, I think it was, what, 10 minutes of game time, his expectations are all the way up there now. Anytime I hear his name, I'm going to be expecting a sublime performance because he's come on, he's run onto the pitch, he said all his prayers, he's done all that, he prayed about three times. He come on, and not only did he score a goal, the finesse on that goal, the curve on that ball, went through the players, through the defenders, and hit the back of the net with so much tech. And apparently, he's not even left-footed, and he hit it with his left foot. So mm -hmm. if he can do that, and, a, and he, the crosses he put in, somebody, um, when I was on the AFTV live stream, somebody commented saying, uh, Cedric has put in more crosses this game than Bellerin has his whole season and that may not be a true stat but it felt like a real one because he came into that game, made so many crucial crosses into that game um, and that's what we need from a right back and he looks very, very dangerous um, so it's, it'll be interesting to see what Arteta does now um, and how often we'll see him play because he's set the bar high Do you think Bellerin should perhaps be a bit, you know, concerned about starting or making I an appearance? I think he is concerned because when he got subbed off, he, obviously no one ever looks happy when they get subbed off, but he just looks down. Um, and apparently when Cedric scored that goal, his face was, was a picture. He didn't look happy at all. I mean, your teammates just scored, you should be buzzing, but he didn't look happy. So he's probably thinking that his time might be up, but who knows? Who knows? Speaking of goals as well, I mean, we saw Aubameyang reach his 50th and 51st goal setting a new record as the fastest Arsenal man to achieve that. How do you think that sort of impacts his career now at Arsenal or even moving forward? Uh, I don't know how it impacts his career. I mean, if, if it's anything to show for the time he's been at Arsenal, at least he might possibly have two golden boots. He won the golden boot last season, joint with Salah and Mane. Um, and he's joint top goal scorer of the league with Vardy right now. So who knows? He could edge it and win two golden boots, but that's all he has to show for for being at Arsenal at the moment um, and although he hasn't been there here that long I'm sure being a top striker in the league tw two years in a row you would expect to win some silverware I know we're still in the FA Cup but he hasn't I'm, I'm just saying this I hope he stays but I'm trying to think from his personal point of view what does he have to stay for a couple of golden boots every season it's not enough um, but I'm sure he's buzzing he looks so so happy uh, when he scored those goals that he looks so like you could see on his face he was buzzing. But even when he got subbed off, he was on a hat trick. He got subbed off. He didn't look upset. Probably saving himself for Wolves. But 
I don't know, hopefully he just puts him in a more confident, after that performance, he's more confident in signing the contract. You know, Saka signed the team. Um, he sat, after he got subbed off, he was sat talking to Saka. They were laughing about something. The post-match interview sounded positive. So hopefully, and then Maitland Niles commented on one of his posts saying, big man, sign the team, stop messing about and posting pictures. And he responded with laughing emojis. So agent Maitland Niles, if you're watching, do your thing. <laughs> I mean, we are seeing a lot more of the youngsters as well. I mean, what sort of energy do you think they're bringing to Arsenal? Good energy, quick legs, tenacity. They want, they want things. They want to like build a career at this club, and who wouldn't want to? Especially, especially the ones that have come through Hayland, like the Sackers and Willets. And it's it's interesting to see what the future holds for them. Like even Willets scored goals, and he hasn't even made played that many minutes. So. It's interesting what the future holds for the young players of Arsenal. Martinez as well, who's uh, filling in for Leno. Um, he's got six clean sheets in seven starts. I mean, how happy are you with, with his performance also? He should be so happy with that because that's a really good stat to have. And I'm sure he was nervous coming. I don't know, actually. Maybe he's not nervous. because I'm sure he's always believed in his capabilities. Um, but it's big boots to fill because Leno was, as a lot of fans would say, he's been one of the biggest game players of our season so far, one of the most important players as a goalkeeper. So him coming into that to fill those boots, he's probably thinking, ah, this is a lot. But he showed no hesitation. He's made some critical saves. Like, he looks very comfortable. Um, and Leno could probably be fighting for a space back in the team now. Who's your personal preference of the two? Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> Hopefully that's me, I, I, I have screamed Leno all season because of what he's done for us. Um, but of course, Martinez's distribution is 100% better. Uh, he's, he's better with his feet. But I don't know, man. I love both of them. I love both. Don't, don't you do that to me. <laughs> so, so, Pips, how do you think uh, the top five is looking now? I mean, we're still far off it. We're in seventh, like you said. But Chelsea have dropped points. Leicester dropped points. Uh, we've got, but the thing is, we've got really, really big fixtures ahead of us. Wolves, Leicester, uh, Liverpool. These are very, very important games. If we could get three and three, which sounds insane, but anything's possible type of thing. You don't, I don't know. Like, if we could get three and three, then it's very, very likely that the challenge for the top five is still on. I said weeks ago that it's, it's off. We were sitting in night and all that. But now, it's looking like a possibility. So, I don't know, you guys let me know in the comments below. Could we possibly challenge for a Champions League spot again this season? Teams are dropping points. We've earned some points. Um, goal difference has gone up a little bit. I don't know, let me know in the comments below. Right, so that is it from us. The next Arsenal fixture is on Saturday against Wolverhampton at the Molyneux. I'm not upset. I was meant to be there. <laughs> to be there because I still haven't been to that ground I still haven't been to the Molyneux but when I see it on the TV where they have the flames going up I like it it looks like a good vibe so I was really excited to go to that away game but um, hopefully we just get three points instead maybe we could just go and watch it from our car <laughs> how are we going to see it sis? how? on the phone <laughs> right let us know what you're expecting from this game and who you're most looking forward to seeing on the lineup.